And number 20, we're using hypothesis test uh, for population proportions, whereas in previous um, sections we were um, doing them for population means. And so to look at this, here in the book, it discusses how we can use a normal distribution for these hypothesis tests, but there are a few criteria. Our sample size n uh, multiplied uh, by our population proportion has to be greater than or equal to 5, and our sample size n multiplied by q, which is 1 minus our population proportion, also has to be greater than or equal to 5. So a couple checks we always have to do at the beginning. So we'll do those right away here. Our P is listed at 0.37, and our sample size is 350. So running those tests, uh, P was stated, Q is one minus P. And so then we take each of those values and multiply them by the sample size, and we're looking for uh, numbers larger than five, uh, and Q times the sample size is also larger than 5. So we can definitely use the normal distribution here to run our hypothesis test. And if a statistician ever ran into a situation where these values were not at least 5, what they could do is go out and gather a much larger sample. And the larger your sample becomes, the larger these values become. And so that's what they would have to do in real practice in order then to run their hypothesis test. They would need a, to gather a larger sample. But back to our example here, a normal sampling distribution can be used because uh, both of these criteria were met. And we come up here and looking at our claim, our claim is that the population proportion is greater than a certain value. No statement of equality at all, so that has to be the alternative hypothesis. And our null hypothesis then would be less than or equal to that same value. The critical values are always dependent uh, directly on what alpha is. In this case, we're looking at 0.04. So in a normal distribution, uh, we're going to find the values that mark there being 0.04 or 4% of the distribution at that critical value or even further into the right-hand tail of the distribution. In Excel, we'll use uh, equals norm.s.inv, put 0.04 in there as our input, and we get back that critical value. It's going to give us the left-hand critical value, negative 1.75. Since our alternative hypothesis is greater than, uh, it's pointing to the right, that symbol is, we know we're doing a right-hand tail test, and so uh, by the symmetry of the normal distribution, we know the critical value would be a positive. 1.75. And so our rejection region is anything even further into the tail past that, so anything greater than 1.75. And so now we need to find our standardized test statistic. To calculate that for a hypothesis test with proportions, the formula is right here on the top part of the fraction. We're going to take our sample proportion and subtract our null hypothesis for the population proportion. On the bottom, we have uh, one uh, square root that contains inside of it p times q uh, divided by n, where n is the sample size, p is that null hypothesis for the population proportion, and q is 1 minus p. So using that formula in Excel, the top part of the formula, our sample proportion, minus our null hypothesis for the population proportion. And on bottom, we have a square root, and it's that null hypothesis for the population proportion multiplied uh, by 1 minus that value, multiplied by q. So 1 minus 0.37 is 0.63. And then divide by the sample size, and that formula gives us back our test statistic for this hypothesis test. And since our test statistic is greater than our critical value. It's further into the tail. It's in the rejection region. We will reject the null hypothesis, which means there is enough evidence to support the alternative hypothesis, which in this case was the claim. In 21, a research center claims at least 30% of adults in a certain country think their taxes will be audited. 
So that is our claim right there, at least 30%. Think their taxes will be audited. That contains a statement of equality, 30% or more. And we can always refer back to this chart to help us setting up our null and our alternative. At least a certain value would give us a null of greater than or equal to that value. So that is our null, which means our alternative then would be the complement, which is just less than that value. Critical values in rejection regions are always based upon whatever alpha is. In this case, it's 0.05. And so uh, in the normal distribution, the critical value for 0.05 or 5% of the distribution being in the tail would be uh, negative 1.64 for a left tail test. And we do want to use that negative 1.64 because we have a left tail test since our alternative is less than. So our rejection region is anything even further into the tail than our critical value. And so now to calculate our test statistic, we're going to need to use our formula here. And so the top part of the formula, we take our sample proportion and we subtract our null hypothesis for the population proportion. And then on the bottom, we take a square root of, and inside the square root, we're doing our null hypothesis for the population proportion multiplied by Q, which is 1 minus that value. So 1 minus 0.3 gives us 0.7. And then divide by our sample size. And that gives us back our test statistic here for our hypothesis test. And so we can see that that is further um, into the tail, past the critical value, so it's in the rejection region, which means we will end up rejecting the null hypothesis. And since the claim in this case was the null hypothesis, uh, that claim is being rejected. So there is enough evidence from our hypothesis test to reject our claim. For number 22, some, re some research shows that more than 29% of employees in a certain country have changed jobs in the past three years. So start off, we need to identify our null and our alternative hypothesis. The claim here is that more than 29% have changed jobs. And so that is, uh, does not have a statement of equality. More than a certain value um, would be here talking about the alternative hypothesis. So we're going to get an alternative hypothesis with more than that value, which means our null is less than or equal to that value. So we'll end up with these null and alternative hypothesis. And then our critical value is all dependent upon whatever we set alpha to be. In this case, it's 0.10. So we're using the normal distribution for this hypothesis test. You want to put 0.1 into this formula and we get back our critical value. Excel's giving the left-hand critical value, marking where there's 10% in the left-hand tail of the distribution. Since our alternative is a greater than, we're doing a right-tailed test, so we'll want to use those same numerals but positive 1.28 instead of negative. And so our rejection region would be anything further past that into the right-hand tail, anything greater than 1.28. Now our standardized test statistic, to calculate that, we're going to use this formula right here. And notice that in this problem, they don't tell us uh, what our sample proportion is. Instead, they tell us how large the sample was, 220 people and how many out of uh, that sample did end up changing jobs. So 77 out of 220 people changed jobs. So from that, we'll have to calculate our sample proportion. And so we do that with a quick division. 77 divided by 220 gives us our sample proportion. So now we can calculate uh, our test statistic here, our sample proportion, subtract, our null hypothesis for the uh, what the population proportion was, that goes on top. And then on the bottom of our calculation here, it's the square root of that null hypothesis for the population proportion multiplied by Q, 
which is one minus that value, and then divide by the size of our sample. And doing that gives us back our test statistic. And so looking at our test statistic, it is larger than our critical value, so it's in the rejection region, which means we will reject the null hypothesis. And since our claim here, our claim was the alternative hypothesis. If we're rejecting the null, it means we're supporting the alternative. So there is enough evidence to support our claim in this example. And in number 23, we're doing a hypothesis test with proportions using the p-value approach. A humane society claims that less than 74% of households in a certain country own a pet. So there's no statement of equality. It's strictly less than 74% uh, is our claim. And so uh, we're going to get this for our null and our alternative, less than 74. The claim is the alternative. And then greater than or equal to that value would be our null hypothesis. We're going to find the test statistic here. And so we're going to have to use this formula uh, to calculate that. Our problem tells us the size of our sample. And in this case, it's 400. And how many people on that sample own a pet? In this case, it's 280. So to calculate the sample proportion, we're going we're gonna to have to uh, take that 280 divided by 400, and we get our sample proportion. So for our test statistic, you take the sample proportion and subtract our null hypothesis for the population proportion that goes on top. And then on bottom of our calculation, we have the square root of our null hypothesis for our population proportion multiplied by Q, which is one minus um, that value. So one minus 0.74 gives us 0.26. And then divide by the, uh, the size of our sample. And doing that gives us back our test statistic. And using the p-value approach, norm.s.distribution.dist, our, our first input is our test statistic, and then uh, comma true. And so we get the p-value, the probability of getting a test statistic like the one we did, or even further into the left-hand tail. And we are doing a left tail test since our alternative is less than. So that's the value we want to use. And since this value, we need to compare it to alpha to decide whether to reject the null hypothesis or not. Our p-value is less than alpha. If that's the case, it means we will reject the null hypothesis. If we're rejecting the null hypothesis, it means we're supporting the alternative. And the alternative hypothesis was the claim. So there is enough evidence to support the claim. 